I loved being with Vivid. I mean, when I first was with them, it, we had everybody. Mm-hmm. We had Tara Patrick, Jenna Jameson, Janine. I mean, Savannah, yeah. Tawny Roberts. Like yeah. it, we had so many girls. And the only hard part was I was the only girl that didn't have implants at the time. Mm. Can't say that now, but <laughs> <laughs> at the time I was the only girl that had natural boobs. So when we go and do like promo stuff, it was... It was hard because everybody had these big ass bras yeah. and here I am like little itty bitty titty committee and yeah. it, it was really hard and I never got my boobs as a vivid girl. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, you know, I didn't fall into the peer pressure or whatnot, right. but I, it was definitely difficult because, you know, you're, I'm with all these busty girls and I'm like, yeah. hey, look at these little guys. <laughs> <laughs> they were cute. I mean, but. <laughs> <laughs> Your boobs are lovely. They're even better now. But um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I was with them for quite some time and I still do a lot of stuff for Vivid. I love um, Marcy and Steven Hirsch. Mm-hmm. Um, they always referred to me as their go-to girl. Mm-hmm. So when I was with them, I got to do um, MSNBC with Rita Crosby, um, her live show that she used to have. Um, I did Fox Red Eye a couple times and then I also spoke at Yale. That's fantastic. Which was really cool. I guess Yale, I don't know if they still do it, but every other year they would like dedicate um, a week to sex education. Mm. And so um, at the time, Ron Jeremy and the Triple X Porn Church were going around touring cap- campuses yeah, and yeah. doing debates. Um, and so they knew that we were going to, yeah. And so Ron they, Jeremy can't do that anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All these people. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Boy, do we have some stories, right? I know. Um, so. We were going to be there. Me, Savannah Sampson, Stephen Hirsch was going to be there as well. Stephen Hirsch, it, Vivid is no longer owned by the Hirsches anymore. They right. sold it and it's pretty much non-existent now. It's owned, it got bought by Gamma. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but Stephen Hirsch used to be one of the owners of uh, Vivid for those who don't know who yeah. he is. <clears throat> and so anyways, we were there. He was going to do a uh, talk about business or something. Mm-hmm. And and so we were all there. So they asked um, and. Nightline, Martin Bashir from Nightline, um, NBC News, I believe that is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where it's going to be there and they were going to film Ron Jeremy and I can't remember the guy at the Triple X Porn Church's name. I think it's like Chris or Greg or something like that. They were going to do a debate and he had somebody on his side and so they wanted Ron to have somebody on his side. So I got picked, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which was really cool. And so I did. I was super, super nervous. Um, but when I'm in a situation like that, I can actually be really smart. Mm. <laughs> it's like I have a switch that goes off. You know that switch you see in your house and you don't yeah. know what it goes to? Yeah. It's me. <laughs> so when you're under pressure, you actually perform really well. Uh, yeah, which is surprising. You know, yeah. uh, it's like the nerves go out and I just become really smart. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I don't say no likes or ums or whatever. <laughs> And that's why I became their go-to girl because when Mm -hmm. I did the live show with Rita Crosby on MSNBC, I was so nervous, but they were just blown away by how well I carried myself. So Mm -hmm. they wanted me to represent their company and, you know, part of the industry Mm -hmm. as well. So I did it. It was a lot of fun. Um, And then right after that, I went to Australia for Sexpo. Mm -hmm. And I was in my room on my break and I turned on the TV and I heard Martin Bashir's voice. And I was like, oh, I'm going to watch this. And it was actually the episode I was on. Oh, wow. So it was pretty cool to be, you know, all the way on the other side of the world and get to see it. So how were those interviews for you? Like, what were some of the questions that they asked you? Were there any that were really difficult for you to answer? Or did you find any that just had like this ridiculous inherent prejudice in them? Um, Definitely when we were doing the debate, like the stuff that was coming off and the things that people were saying, um, it it was frustrating. Mm-hmm. The people, was it Yale or Harvard? No, it was Yale. I was at Yale. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, the, the students at Yale were really impressed and they were, they're actually very liberal, mm-hmm. um, that school. Um, so they, they were really great. I, I would get a little frustrated because, you know, Ron wanted to always have the stage. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. So he would like talk over me or not let me finish answering. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was more frustrated with. Um, but just the misconception, you know, mm-hmm. obviously now with social media and all that, and it being more mainstream porn, it's not as taboo as it was back then. Mm -hmm. Um, And people are a little more privy to, you know, what the industry is really about. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and the judgment isn't as bad. (laughs) Yeah. It's still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But it's not as bad. You know, people are a little more aware. Um, But just like, I think the hardest part is the girls or the men that come into the industry and then they blame the industry for all their problems. Like when they were in it and they were making all the money and all this, it was great. But then when they leave and then all the stigma that sticks with them, then it's all of a sudden our fault. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know, nobody, let me rephrase this. At the end of the day, nobody held a gun to my head and asked me to do anything. Mm -hmm. But I do understand that there are some people in this industry that aren't as strong-minded or Mm strong-willed as myself that 
I know when to say no. Mm-hmm. You know, like I didn't do boy girl till I was ready. Mm-hmm. I didn't do a lot of things till I was ready. But some girls, because they're agents or because the pressure of the industry, feel they have to do things. Mm-hmm. So I understand that. But at the end of the day, you have a choice. Yeah. So to put that blame on somebody else, I, I feel like it's kind of equal, you know? There's a lot more information too these days with the internet. Like yes. if you want to really research the industry and kind of explore your options, right. you can do that. Right. You can go online and you can find a lot of information. It was actually interesting. A new girl in the industry that I've shot a couple of times, Savannah Bond from Australia, she actually did a lot of research before she decided to come in and start shooting. And she said that it was actually um, my podcast, uh-huh. this podcast. And I think also Asa Akira's. Oh, yeah. Um, I think the, her, the, porn pod- ha- the Pornhub yeah. podcast. Uh, or maybe it was just her writings. But anyways, those were the two <clears throat> things that kind of like encouraged her, inspired her to get in the industry. And so she learned a lot from listening to the stories with all the people that I have on. Um, so there's, you know, and she researched her agent. So like, if you do your research, like you can gather the information to make the right decisions. But if you're just going to kind of impulsively jump in and let yourself, you know, get dragged in by some, you know, agent who's going to take advantage of you. And there are plenty of those people that can definitely happen, but you, you do have the information at hand now to make the right decisions where before the internet came along, that wasn't. That wasn't true. Yeah. And I mean, I, my agent, when I got in, Roy was a scumbag, um, but I didn't let him tell me what to do. I'm very strong minded. I'm like, right. you know, at the end of the day, I have to lay my head on the pillow and sleep with myself. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to do anything that's going to compromise my self-worth, mm-hmm. you know, or how I feel. So <clears throat> when things were happening or whatnot, I was like, I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a lot of people would get scared because they feel pressured into it, but I was girl, girl for so long that a lot of people in the business thought I was a lesbian that yeah. I didn't even like men. And I'm like, no, yeah. I just, I wanted to know the industry. Cause at that time, you know, there was no internet where I could research it. Right. So for me, I, you know, I was like, look, <clears throat> I'm 19 years old. I want to know the industry and I want to know what it is. Cause at the end of the day, I have to live with this for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. 